Atheist Nomads, episode 196. There is so much news. OMGs. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo haws. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me, as always, is Wesley. Hi, how are you? I'm kind of sick. Yeah, but not that bad. <laughs> no, no. I kind of sound like I was trying to force it to it out. I'm not, but it's still pretty bad. So yeah. if you hear me cough or it goes silent, you know why, people. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, Lauren's not with us. She's not feeling too hot today. No. Yeah. Mm. But we did have the first ultrasound yesterday. Oh, boy. Yeah. You got a little pee pod? Yep. Yep. Cool. I got to see its heart beating. Oh, boy. It was It was really cool. <laughs> like like I, I was I was sitting there uh and I could see the screen Lauren couldn't at this point while the tech was doing measurements and was like wait is that it no no wait is that it no no is that it no 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 I think that one is yeah maybe no, uh, no. I don't know <laughs> and then she turned the screen towards us and I got up and and she's like and there's your baby and I was like yeah awesome it already the, looks like you, huh? With the heart beating, uh, 141 beats per minute. Holy shit. That's normal. I know, I know. The smaller the creature, usually the faster the heart beats. Right. And, you know, this this little thing's half an inch long, so pretty yeah, little. Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. fucking small, yeah. 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 Crazy to think that it's here just in a few months will be like about 20 inches. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a big, a big jump. Yeah, yeah, totally. Just barely small enough for a cro- good crock pot. <laughs> Sorry. Wesley, but, uh, you will not uh, eat yeah. my baby. Okay, not yours. Okay. No, we don't eat friends' babies. Not friends' babies. No, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Oh, uh, we have lots of... of oh, how, how have you been, Wesley? Uh, uh, not too bad. Uh, nothing big going on over here, really. Uh yeah, I'm about to replace a horn on my motorcycle. That's about it. Uh, yeah, so nothing, nothing big. How about you? Besides your cool ultrasound. Oh, that's really about all that's worth talking about on the show. Um, oh, yeah. I did eat a Kinder egg, and I'm still alive. Oh, cool. I thought I should point that out. Huh. Yeah. Oh, our my my in laws gave us a uh, their old electric smoker. Oh, so fun. yeah, this weekend I'm going to be doing ribs. Oh, sweet. Nine hours on the smoker. We might have to come over. <laughs> <laughs> Just take us like nine hours. To, um, no, like 12 hours to get there, but whatever. Nah, it's, it's about, it's about nine. So okay. you leave as I put, put the in, ribs put in, the in smoker, dinner and yeah. then you show up just in time to eat. Yeah, that works. I'm, I'm down for that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then as you you get into town, just get off the freeway when you start seeing the the billowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll stop in and get a bottle on the way, and yeah, yeah we'll make this happen. Yeah, all right. Um, live recording episode two hundred will be coming up on May twenty at three p.m. Mountain. That's two Pacific, uh, five Eastern. We will be recording for two hundred minutes. Holy shit. So this will be fun. It will Throw be back fun. to our old shows. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah. Cool. Let's do this. All right. And <laughs> uh, we have lots of news. And uh, yeah, so skipping we're, dusting we're off the degree. battle through it. Yep. Arizona State Representative Athena Solomon gave a secular invocation. So that was cool. Yeah. Uh, second one to do that. She was preceded... Uh, few years back by Ron Mendez, who gave the first atheist invocation at the House, but she's actually taken his seat as he's moved on to the state Senate. Nice. Yeah. Well, after she finished her invocation, Representative Mark Fincham, Republican, of course, got permission to give a proper Christian prayer. Hmm. Then Speaker J.D. Mesnard reminded everyone of the rules that he'd laid out at the beginning of the year, 
and including that these must be prayers, they must invoke a higher power, and if the person leading it doesn't believe in a higher power, then they must ask the members to focus on their own. (laughs) So Solomon asked him if he thought that she'd broken the rules, and he let her know that, yes, he did think she did. Right. Because it wasn't a prayer. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I seem to recall there was a second, uh, uh, during the the first uh, atheist uh, invocation a few years back, that uh, they tried to kind of pull this shit also, but there was a uh, Native American that was uh, part of the uh, reps in there also, and he basically uh, backed him up and mm-hmm. said, you know, my prayer wouldn't wouldn't talk about uh, higher powers or anything else. I mean, are you going to say mine would be uh, just just as bad as 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 his? And they kind of just let it go. So yeah. apparently, they put in new rules to kind of counter exactly that, huh? Exactly. Wow. All right. Kind of a dick move. Just going to put it out there, Arizona. It's Arizona. Yeah, nothing what do you new, expect? But, yeah, I'm saying nothing new, but yeah. yeah. This Congratulations. Is, this is what's coming out of Sam's uh, obtuse triangle. <laughs> Oklahoma, which we already covered, uh, yeah. Florida, and Arizona. Mm. <laughs> oh, Sam, we love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, let's let's go ahead and back it up to Texas. Mayor Ivy Taylor of San Antonio was speaking as part of a forum on homelessness and poverty and talked about how teenage pregnancy is part of the problem and that education is the solution. Hmm. But then when she was asked about the root cause, she gave this answer. Uh Uh-oh. I mean, since you're with the Christian Coalition, I'll go ahead and put it out there that, to me, it's broken people. You know, uh, people not uh, being in relationship with their creator and uh, therefore not uh, being in um, good relationship with their their families and their communities and, you know, uh, not being productive members of society. Right. So Uh if you're not good with God, you are morally corrupt and not uh, allowed to be part of the the money making community apparently yeah <laughs> wow okay yeah sure yeah so this is pretty obviously you know pretty bad thing to be hearing from the mayor now she did also mm-hmm. acknowledge that this part isn't anything that she can do about as mayor but she does think that that mm-hmm. is the deepest uh cause of generational poverty and uh so she got a lot of flack, and Rightfully she so. responded with quite the non-apology, huh. saying that you know she's devoted her life to breaking down the chains of devo- uh, generational poverty, uh, and she's done so because of her faith in God and belief in Jesus' ministry on earth. Well, she just said it was her faith in God that you know, said that if you're not uh, right with God, if uh, also... Um, Gonna suspect if you're an atheist, uh, if you don't make money, that's completely on you. I mean, God's not gonna help you unless you are a fucking believer. Well, she didn't say that, she didn't actually go deep enough to say that the problem isn't not making money. Uh, oh, it sounded very prosperity gospel to me. Okay, I, I could kind of see a little bit of that. Um, uh, but it, it, the, the, actual words though was that if you don't have if you don't have a relationship with your creator then you're not going to have a good family or be a part of society that's that's just bizarre it's just a serious asshole move that's what it is especially when you look at the actual stats and the less religious people are Typically, the more educated they are, the more educated people are, typically the more wealthy they are. Hmm. And atheists also tend to have a lower divorce rate than believers. 
Awesome snap. So <laughs> I don't actually see anything in the numbers that would back up this kind of claim. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's a shitty thing to say. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, we got breaking news. Oh, we need to take uh, a break. Okay, well, break then breaking news. Okay. Atheist Nomads oh, is proudly right. brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey. We're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. So we got breaking news. A uh, federal judge just blocked Trump's attack on sanctuary cities. So, yeah, poor little Jeff Sessions. Oh, poor little Jeff Sessions. Him and his big ears. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure most people have heard about this, that uh, cities that don't want to cooperate with the uh, federal government and the ICE team of, you know, deporting people mm-hmm. with or without just cause. Uh, yeah. Um, Trump was going to, like, uh, withhold uh, federal funding for a lot of a lot of the for all of these cities that were going to do that and it it looks like uh that just completely got smacked down so uh update as of 4 26 p.m on tuesday the 25th the federal court order notes that trump's administration's attack on sanctuary cities suffers from various constitutional flaws it imposes conditions on federal grant recipients without unambiguous legal authorization to do so Mm mm-hmm and it imposes conditions on both of those grant recipients that bear no relationship to the purpose of the grant. Uh, both of these errors validate, violate the uh, Supreme Court's holding on a dole. So, basically, uh, yeah, um, this was brought uh, brought on by San Francisco and Santa Clara, and... Thanks to those two lovely cities, uh, we got to see that uh, this shit is, in fact, illegal so far. As long as, you know, some, as long as another court doesn't turn it over. But yeah. Right. Which I I, I would have a hard time imagining that would get turned over or overturned, considering that the police power of the state creates very well defined boundaries. And it is standard practice for local and state law enforcement to not enforce federal law. Federal law enforcement enforces federal law. Yeah, under the Supreme Court's anti-commandeering doctrine, the feds cannot order a state or local government to participate in federal programs. Mm -hmm. Thus, while the state or municipality may voluntarily agree to have its police force participate in those federal immigration enforcement programs, uh, they have the absolute right to do so. Yeah. Uh, and the, the fed gov, I mean, there, there is tons of, of government funding that's out there that, you know, helps cities and States all the time. And if those, if those cities and States wanted to continue getting those funds, they would have to continue meeting all of the requirements to get those funds. But since there hasn't been a, um, there hasn't been this ICE team to, you know, to help work on uh, deporting people, since that hasn't been a condition of any of those funds in the past, uh, the government can't just like whoop, add those in and say, now you have to meet this requirement too. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's a hooray for one thing. Uh, you can't just add it in later and just say you need to do this too. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> poor little Jeff Sessions. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> fucking idiot. What's kind of interesting is states have been playing around with this too, not just cities. Um, Oregon is is considering becoming a, the first ever sanctuary state. Wow. And Idaho was looking at a bill 
to not allow any sanctuary cities within the state. (laughs) What's ironic is Idaho law also doesn't allow for actively checking for immigration status unless there is a really good reason to. Hmm. So you can't just like uh, stop and frisk and like, Without it, without any just cause, and I think or with, just see, with, see, see, see a, a quote brown person walking down the street and say we must pull him over and check his papers. I think under, if I remember correctly, under Idaho state law, uh, oh. they can't actually check your immigration status until after you've been booked. Wow, ain't that some shit? Which created the interesting scenario where they were threatening to not allow the creation of any sanctuary cities where the state is basically a sanctuary state already <laughs> yeah wow that's actually pretty surprising to me yeah i think it was just a, a an oversight <laughs> well <laughs> that, that's pretty fucking funny actually that or protecting farm laborers uh oh yeah yeah okay, hard, I totally see hard crackdowns one. on immigration would destroy idaho's economy hmm <laughs> Well, badass. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. pretty fucking funny. Uh-huh. Well, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, mm. along with, yeah, former Texas governor who we loved so much, um, along with some other members of Trump's cabinet, attend a weekly Bible study held at the Department of Health and Human Services. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is led by Pastor Bible Ralph study. Drollinger of Capital Ministries, whose goal is to create right-wing Christian politicians like Michelle Bachman. Oh, so complete idiots. All right. Oh, she's on the board of Capital Ministries. Well, I didn't say they had good taste or anything. Uh, they also hold weekly Bible studies at House and Senate offices, too. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, why can't people just get fucking milk delivered? Why why the Bible? <laughs> well, Ugh. and worse than that is Drollinger. Oh yeah. He he's so extreme that his own church kicked him out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good that he had a good friend like Rick Perry, you know, failed presidential candidate Rick Perry. Hmm. <laughs> he has called Catholicism the world's largest false religion. True. He has said that female legislators who continue working after having children are sinners. Okay, I don't quite agree with that one. That homosexuality is an abomination. Not really on the, on the same plane as that one either. Okay. That social we- welfare programs are unchristian. Yeah, well, that one could go either way. That God is a capitalist, not a communist. I don't think God ever really declared it, it what, what his allegiances were. <laughs> oh, and he's a, a good friend of uh, your buddy Jeff Sessions. Oh, yeah. Well, Who, he said, hungers and thirsts for the scripture. Yeah. Sounds kind of gross. All right. Well. Uh huh. He takes credit <laughs> for um, helping Sessions uh, strengthen his his anti-immigrant views. Good for him. Well, <laughs> I mean, when you Ku Klux Klan together, you stay together. I'm guessing. So, <laughs> ooh. Yeah, an actual quote from him. I've had the distinct honor of teaching him on this subject and many others. There's nothing more exciting when you're a Bible teacher to see the guys you're working with, to see him or her articulate something you've taught them when they were under the gun. Under the gun, really? Uh, In that case, referring to Sessions' uh, confirmation hearing. Yeah, yeah. Hooray. (laughs) Oh, fucking idiots. All right. Oh, and about Bachman, he says that she has unerring or unerring actually instincts when it comes to applying her christian faith to the law yeah 
She thinks biblically. She doesn't need a whole lot of time to figure out how to vote because she sees the world through scriptural lens. We need more men and women like her in office. Well, I will agree that she does see everything through through a scriptural lens. I, I mean, past that, I really don't know. But yeah, boy. I, I honestly don't know how she could have held a post from 2007 to 2015. Just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they've been sponsored by the current CIA director, yeah. Mike Pence. Yeah. Human Services Secretary Tom Price and Representative Mike Conway, Republican of Texas. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know much about Mike Pompeo, but <laughs> mm. apparently uh, he's a big fan of Dominionist theology. Oh, lovely. Radical Dominionist theology. If he's supporting this, this asswipe, ah, oh, man, he... he it's amazing how modern conservative Christianity, so much of it just perfectly aligns with right-wing fascist politics. Hmm. They have completely forgotten about feeding the, and clothing the poor and turning the other cheek and, you know, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Ah, they are giving to the poor. They've, they've completely, yeah, they they don't care about any of that. They care about money and keeping the populace afraid. <laughs> and all that anti-immigrant bullshit, yeah. all that really comes down to is it's about keeping people scared. Because when people are scared, they vote Republican. Hmm. Well, there must have been a lot of scared people, but not enough to actually elect Trump. Well, there were enough in the right states to elect Trump. And that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. Well, a bunch of religious right legal groups met at the Heritage Foundation to talk about their hopes that now that they've got Neil Gorsuch on the Supreme Court, that they can now weaken church-state separation. Oh, hooray. And this is all going to start with Trinity Lutheran Church of Columbia versus Comer where a church is suing the state of Missouri over the state denying the church a grant to improve its school's playground. Hmm. I haven't even heard of this case. Right. So this case is the state set up a grant program to improve playgrounds so that they'd be safer and, um, you know, better. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. So this church applied for one of these grants. Uh, Missouri state law does not allow state funds to go to support religious institutions. Rightly so. This okay. school is a religious institution. So, no, that doesn't work. The state denied the grant and the school or the church sued. Hmm. And this is actually a... Great example of how they are going to try to weaken church-state separation because you've got the competing, constantly competing standards of free exercise and no establishment of religion. Free exercise on the playground? Well, free exercise, the argument, the argument is free exercise and equal protection is (laughs) that if that school had not been religious... They could have gotten, or if it just, if just straight up, if the, if the grounds there were not owned by a church, that playground would have gotten that grant money. Therefore, they were being infringed on because they were religious. Well, I mean, technically they are, but uh, rightfully so. There's a policy in place. And if you do it for one, you're going to have to do it, do, do it for all. And that's one hell of a slippery slope. And that's kind of what they're hoping on courses to help with. Right. Well, and that's what they're trying to, what they're trying to do is a slippery slope. This is a yep. case where it is very easy to say that, yes, the state shouldn't have disadvantaged this group because of their religion. Well, that di- quote disadvantaged group can fucking pay for their own fucking uh, playground upgrades. Yeah, 
But that is a much easier argument to make than the Washington State case where they don't allow any state scholarships to go to ministerial students. If you major in anything else, you can get, and you, you're from Washington and going to college in Washington, there are grants available. If you are a ministerial student, you can't. Uh, hmm. Did that one hit you? No, I wasn't from Washington. Oh, that's right. I, was I just remember you, you went to... Uh... I did go to college in Washington, but I was not a Washingtonian. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I was not eligible anyway. But that if that program, and there was a, a lawsuit about that program, and, and the lawsuit failed, uh, hmm, because good. that would be state funds going to directly support the teaching of theology. Mm -hmm. And, but if you say, you know, you can't disadvantage a church or school because it's religious, so yes, they should have gotten the grant money for the playground, then it makes it a little bit easier to say, well, you can't disadvantage a student because of their major if their major is religious. So you go ahead and, and throw out that rule, and you just kind of keep going. <laughs> and the terrifying thing is, as fallacious as slippery slope arguments are, courts run on the slippery slope. It's called precedent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We're going to take our second break, and then we've got some international stories. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. So, what are those godless communists in China up to? Hey, don't disparage them like that. <laughs> they're only they're only banning some baby names in a heavily Muslim re region. I mean, that's not that bad. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> Chinese government is yeah totally further tightening its grip on Muslims in Western China, which I didn't know there was a a lot of Muslims over there, but apparently there's a decent amount. The Uyghurs are mostly Muslim, and they are the biggest population group in Xinjiang, which is absolutely huge. Huh. Well, like that region yeah, like is ginormous. Ten million. And still a, a, a minority group. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty oh, decent. The territory is huge. The population mm. is tiny. Mm. It's like China's version of Alaska. <laughs> All right. Well, if you've ever heard names like, a, oh, say, Muhammad, uh, <laughs> Arafat, uh, Mujahid, and Medina... Uh, those are all blacklisted now. And, uh, well, this one was surprising that it was even on the list, but uh, Jihad. Yeah, you can't name your baby Jihad. Oh, so, man. Yeah, I know. I mean, at least you can still do that. Oh, but yes. They yes. can't. Huh. I mean, you, you still can. I, I will give you a 10 spot if you do that. That'd be so cool. Uh, I, middle I, middle, I, middle no. name, middle name. Come no, on. no. That would be on the list below Tiberius. <laughs> Tiberius should be pretty high on the list. So. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> for, for boys' middle names, Tiberius is my... Anything that Lauren suggests that I don't like, yeah, I prefer Tiberius over that. <laughs> oh, man. Tiberius is cool. I mean, that's like... But then you have to on, go with the first name of James and oh. no Bible names. It's a Star Trek name at that point. No Bible names. It's a, at that point. If you're going James Tiberius, I mean that is a Star Trek name. <laughs> the thought has crossed yeah. my mind. Jean Luc. Nah. I think Lauren has and, put that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> of the yays or nays? Yays. Oh. All right. So. James Tiberius should be on there, too. Just putting it out there. <laughs> I would go with, with uh, Patrick over Jean-Luc. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. 
So, uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the Chinese government definitely considers uh, uh, Xinjiang a hotbed of Islamic extremism, violence, and separatist thought. Whatever that means. Well, they do <laughs> want to be separate. Uh, they don't like the imperialistic control of the Chinese central government. Wait, they don't want to be communist? I thought everybody wants to be communist. Obama wants us to be communist. Just uh, it, ask anybody on the right. No, it's. I, I didn't say they don't want to be communist. I don't know if their 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 movement is anti-communist. It's... Hmm. They're not Chinese. They don't want to be a part of China. Mm. Just like the Tibetans to their south, to the south of them. Mm. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So (laughs) what are you going to do other than name your kid Muhammad or Jihad? Yeah, because China could send, if, if it came down to it, they could easily raise up an army bigger than the entire Uyghur population. Oh, sure. They could triple it, I'm sure, easily. You're a communist. You're, hey, are you a male between age and age? Yes. Join our army. <laughs> you don't have a choice. But it, I, I do think it's, of all the things to ban, names? Hey, Mohammed? Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty powerful name in some circles. Medina? I mean, that's one of their biggest cities. Well, most religious religiously important cities but anything to they have more than two dozen names on their list of banned ethnic minority names i was looking for that list though i couldn't find it but uh it's just kind of weird yeah that is anything to to make you feel like you're less autonomous less of a person Take away your your rights and then take away your choices. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to, to make the people not not just individually feel less like people, but to make them feel less like part of their own people. Be it their religion or their country. Yeah. Yeah. Man. <sighs> Russia's high court has sided with the government in its outlawing of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hmm. Yeah, they ruled them to be an extremist group, and the court called for all church property to be seized and liquidated, and all activities to stop, punishable by several thousand dollar fines, and six to ten years in prison. So a Jehovah's Witness knocking on a door or carrying a watchtower pamphlet could go to jail for ten years. Oh, why can't they do that here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is annoying, but 10 it years. It should be jailable. All right, just a year. I'll, I'll give them a year. <laughs> uh, so uh, going on, branching out from that, Mormons, Adventists, Pentecostals, mm-hmm. and many other evangelical groups are facing the same same thing. Wow. Well, at least similar persecution. Uh, I, I don't... <laughs> I don't know how far the Russians have gone in in persecuting those groups, but they are also persecuting them. Uh, Under current Russian law, only the Russian Orthodox Church is allowed to evangelize. Oh, man. So weird guys with giant beards and and giant dresses are back in charge. All right. Huh. Yeah. And yet somehow right-wing evangelical pastors... Just love Putin. Sure, sure. Just just wait, you know, once they finish with the Mormons and, well, you know, the Seventh-day Adventists are, uh, you know. They're already <laughs> they're, started on Pentecostals and Evangelicals. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they're, they've already got the Jehovah's Witness uh, under their thumb. Then comes the Mormons, and they're just going down the, the list of weird little Christian like sex of Christianity. And so, yeah, um, just wait till it actually gets to be, you know, like fucking Baptists and shit. But, the, but yeah. Baptists already, you, you like, 
Rick Joyner could not go over to Russia and preach an evangelistic series. Okay, okay. And yet he but, would he's happy to say that Putin is is doing God's work and that Hillary Clinton would have been persecuting Christians. Sure, sure. Uh do they do they not understand the meaning of the words they say? Well, you know, Christians think that they're being persecuted every day here in this country, whereas in some, you know, Christian minority countries around the world, they actually are being persecuted, just like atheists. And they love talking about that persecution. But when it's a large Christian majority country persecuting Christians, that would be a much better, that'd be a lot better to to go nuts over that than than this perceived persecution happening at home. Well, you know, give it time. I mean, like I said, once they were really work their way down that list, then, you know, they, they might change their tune, you know, like, especially once, uh, whatever money they're getting and or making with some of those, you know, lovely companies over there, then, you know, maybe it's not love will go away. We'll see. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> All right. Chechnya's as president has now vowed to eliminate all gay men from his territory by the start of Ramadan at the end of next month. Ramadan? Yeah. Isn't that Muslim? Uh-huh. Chechnya is seems... Muslim. Is it really? Yeah. All right, my bad. Yeah. That's where uh that's where most of Russia's Islamic uh terrorism comes from. Okay. Is Chechnya. Chechnya has already started rounding up gay men mm-hmm. and is now saying that they will all be eliminated. Yeah. That sounds a lot like they're going to kill them all. And it's a possibility. Wow. It looks like a just a giant, giant haired penis head uh. <laughs> Ramzan Kadryov uh, close friend of Putin well good for him uh huh <laughs> yeah it, the what, what's been interesting to watch here is first he was claiming that there are no gays or lesbians in Chechnya sure yeah never next was they're rounding up all of the gay men. Well, and now they're going to eliminate a, them all. As of a few hours ago, supposedly more than a hundred have been rounded up, detained in secret prisons on suspicion of being gay in mm-hmm. recent weeks. And yeah, beaten, tortured, and supposedly at least four have been killed. Yeah. This is, this is just not good. What the fuck people? We're supposed to be better than this by now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we, Chechnya is, we of are. course, denying it, but... Mm. Yeah. It's it's pretty shitty. Pretty shitty. I mean, you do have uh, his, his uh, Chechen's leader's denial of brutality. Um, even Vladimir Putin's uh, spokesperson came out and said there had been no evidence found to support the allegations which are first reported in a newspaper, uh, Novaya Gazeta. Gazeta, sorry. Uh, I, I totally nailed that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, looks like a big cover-up and people are disappearing and they happen to be gay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, time to not do that. Yo, time to not if, fucking kill people. If you get reports that there is an Basement sex trafficking ring in a pizzeria? Probably not true. If you hear reports that a marginalized and persecuted group is getting rounded up into concentration camps. And people are disappearing. And people are actually disappearing from that group that is being supposedly rounded up. That's probably true. It, it's worth checking out. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Especially when you then get a report that, yes... Um, we are going to eliminate the gays. Well, you're already rounding them up, so that's going to make it real easy to kill them. You should round yourself up because you look like a big fucking teddy bear. <laughs> I 
I'm going to be the first one to say it. Yep. I think he's gay. <laughs> you think he, he protests too much? I, I do. I think he, yes, totally. <sighs> All right. Well. Yeah. And Isabella Red Cloud is a trans woman who identifies as two-spirit. I hate uh, that phrase, but whatever. It's a know, Native it's American a Native term. Phrase. Yeah. And she's cur- Native. She's currently unemployed, and she does mm-hmm. not have a permanent address. She's currently couch hopping. Hmm. And uh, she went to the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls for a hot meal, which they freely offer to homeless and unemployed people. And nice she was turned away for being inappropriately dressed. Right. Because she was wearing a dress. Well, hmm. One, it shouldn't fucking matter. Two, you know what? It gets pretty fucking cold out there in Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. And if you have a choice between no clothes and a dress, I'm wearing a dress. And you know what? If you're trans and, you know, you identify as two-spirit or or female, then you know what? You might want to wear a dress anyways. Yeah. So... What the fuck, people? You're supposed to help the the homeless and the poor and the hungry? Fucking do it then. And these these gospel missions are they are there to help and proselytize to the poor. <laughs> so yeah. what they should have done, given her a meal, and then talk to her about how sinful she is while she eats it. Well, if it's <laughs> that would have still been shitty, like, but at least she would have been fed. If it's anything like the Salvation Army, you actually have to come in and listen to the pre- to the preacher first, and then you get your food. Yeah, they want they want yeah. you hungry. And yeah, it, they with the 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 gospel missions they they vary as to how they do it, whether the <laughs> the preachings before or after. This one apparently does three hot meals a day, so I'm. I doubt they're preaching at every single one. Wait, no, I take that Mm. back. They probably are preaching at every single one. Yeah. Mm. But that's just shitty. And what about, you know, taking care of the the poor and unfortunate? (laughs) Yeah. Well, not if you wear a dress. You're not supposed to. God damn. What an asshole. (laughs) The the, the group. Yes, the group. What a, what a group of assholes. Yes. Red yes. Cloud is just trying to get a meal. Fucking A. Give Red Cloud three hots and a cock. Come on, man. Suck it up. Yeah. All right. Let's take our uh, last break and then uh, continue on. If you like this show, consider giving us some financial support. We make it really easy with one-time donations or to support us on a per-episode monthly or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at atheistnomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. One dollar an episode is all we ask. Please, think of the kittens. Former priest uh, just got arrested after he was extradited to the U.S. Why, you ask? Well, because he had has a history of uh, touching children in a very sexual, dirty fucking way. You said he's a priest. Uh, well, ex. Ex. Ex priest. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he was... Uh, Augusto Cortez, yes. He was being extradited for doing priestly duties. Uh, well, if those duties mean, like, you know, diddling kids, then yeah, priestly that duties. Definitely seems to be the, the main gist of it. Yeah. yeah, so this guy has a definitely a history of uh, touching kids. He was even on probation for uh, child-related crimes when uh, he actually got in trouble for uh, this one that he's being arrested on now. God damn. And even after he he had been, you know, got in trouble, got on probation for all of this nasty shit the first time. The church still kept him on. I'm just going to point that out. I mean, As they, they, they might have cha- they they changed his duties and what he did, mm-hmm. and you know, his supposedly changed the his ability to access children. As weird as that sounds, uh, 
and kept him on in the in the in the church because sure why not <laughs> the the standard practice in in Christianity is you sin and then you confess and then you get moved it gets hmm. brushed under the rug and you continue on uh, yeah touching children continue on yes yeah this is fucking disgusting and <laughs> it shouldn't have taken this long to get him back into the country i mean <laughs> Uh, it took years to get him back from Guatemala, which I'm glad they finally did. But uh, this is disgusting. Why? Why do we have people like this? Uh... Oh, and I'm guessing the only reason that Guatemala sent him back was because he was a former priest, not current. Yeah, that's that's probably true. I mean, there. I I I always think of Guatemala as being fairly Catholic. So very. Very. All right. Well, yeah, just horrible. So I can't wait to see what happens to this guy's guy at trial. So I'll try and keep an eye on him. All right. Saudi Arabia, as we, I believe, reported on a few years ago, was elected Mm. to the uh, UN Human Rights Commission. Well, they got reelected and have now been elected to the Commission on the Status of Women. Is this like up is down, right is left, and all well, that kind of weird this bizarro is shit? A UN agency exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women. Okay, yeah, this is bizarro world. Sure. What the actual fuck? Saudi Arabia, the country where just now women might possibly, under extreme circumstances, be able to legally get the right to drive. Man, that's, that's, eh, women drivers, oh my god. I mean, if you gotta wear a, a really big headscarf, you might not be able to see, so. <laughs> Boy, keep them off the roads. Yeah, sure. Ah, come mm. on, you in. Yeah, this absolutely makes no sense. I don't, I don't, I don't. What? No, I don't know. This shouldn't happen. It it, it would be like electing in in the 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 mid nineties, electing Rwanda to the UN, you know, Commission on Refugees. Uh, It'd be like no, it, no. Um, hiring Hitler to be a baker. Ooh. Okay, that one's bad. I I don't get it because ovens. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is just this is dumb. Now, if they really did want to get a a Muslim country on the Women Rights Commission, I've got a really good nomination to make. Hmm. Jordan, okay. hmm. who on Sunday revoked Article three hundred eight. Do tell what is three hundred eight? That was the rule that allowed rapists to get out of jail if they married the victim for at least three years. Wow, sure. Now, last year, they, after much campaigning, they uh, amended the rule to make it so they could only use this loophole if the victim was between 15 and 18 and the attack was believed to be consensual and would not have been considered rape if not due to the girl's age. Huh. So last year they made it so that statutory rape cases, um, you could marry the victim. And the the rationale for this is that it would uh, protect the victim's honor and reputation. Oh, boy. Well, now they have finally, after years of campaigning by women's activists... Muslim scholars, Christian scholars, and, well, a whole lot of other people revoked that batshit. Not actually batshit, but um, um, very conservative rule. (laughs) Ain't that some shit? Well, hooray, that's a step in the right direction. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, now if you, you rape a woman... 
you need to go to jail. And you don't get the second chance of marrying her. Great. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And in some good news for the developing world. And the rest of the world, really. And the rest of the world by 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 proxy. Since, proxy. Uh, like sure. right now, if you look at uh, Africa, it is mm-hmm. about one third of the like total combined GDP of the entire continent is lost due to malaria. God damn. Just malaria. Conceivably stopping the malaria epidemic in Africa could allow that entire continent to modernize really fast. Even though there are there is very rapid modernization and economic growth going on in Africa right now. Anyway, um, this is, uh, well, they, they have now developed a malaria vaccine and they're going to be starting trials in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi in 2018, just next hmm. year. Uh, this is a vaccine that helps give you some immunity against the actual malaria parasite. It requires Four doses to be mm-hmm. effective. I, I know they give it to really young kids, like between five and 17 months, was it? It's, it's like pretty young, be under two years. Um, the pilot is for, uh, be, yeah, between five and 17 months. Hmm. And uh, half of the kids in the pilot will get the vaccine. The other half won't. In the, the initial tri- uh, trials they've done, um, it wasn't particularly effective. Uh, MJ was telling me about this. I think it's like 40% effective. Something like that. 40, 50%. Which which is way better than 0%. That is a lot better than zero. Yeah. It's a start. Uh, One of the things that would definitely slow down the effectiveness is it's not effective until the fourth shot. Mm. And you do one a month for three months. And then the fourth one, 18 months later. Wow. And hope that the kid doesn't get measles by that time. Fuck. Well. And then even with the four doses, it's still only 40% effective. But, you know, shit. (laughs) I will still take 40% over 0%. Yes. Yes. Um, It it does also um, cut the most severe cases by about a third. And uh, reduces the number of children needing hospital treatment and blood transfusion. Wow. So even if it doesn't prevent the infection, it weakens the infection that you will get. So that's not terrible, but this is so far the worst vaccine that has ever been developed. And by worst, I mean least effective. Hmm. Uh, But it is so critical that it's worth it. It is so worth it. So they've been working on this for 30 years, 30 years in the making. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, holy shit. I mean, (sighs) fuck. Just, you know, hopefully another 10 years they'll be able to do even better. Yeah. Well, um, in our fun story of the week... um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's not a waterfall of God's blood. There's this really interesting, cool-looking uh, glacier that feeds a blood-colored waterfall in Antarctica. Hmm. And it is uh, on the Taylor Glacier. And it... Well, I read through the story earlier, and, and basically, uh, you know, you, you got this giant glacier, and you know what? It's still shifting and moving around, and, you know, it, that friction still causes heat, just like anywhere else. And even though the fucking ice is cold, you know, it, that friction still generates heat, which would help make water mm-hmm. and would uh, feed this this waterfall. And the iron-rich uh, soil around that area, well, just kind of helps taint that water red. So, huh. yeah, kind of kind of neat. So it's... Uh, Iron oxide water. Yeah. Yeah, so just a a cool little thing. Check it out. It it looks really gross. Or maybe like an iced coffee, really. 
still. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking miles of white. And then you got this fucking red, reddish waterfall. Kind of crazy. That is, that is pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah I, so. I like it. Especially since you've got the white and then that lower part, it looks kind of brown or like metallic. Yeah, I think that's washing out out into the ocean there. Huh. Yeah, it's it's that's cool. That's definitely cool. Alrighty. And we have feedback. Oh boy. And it's a long one, so I'm not gonna read all of it, but I am going to leave it all in the show notes. Not the version of the show notes that's going out on the RSS feed, just the version that you can find on the website. So if you want to find this, go to atheistnomads.com slash 196, and you can read the whole message. This is from Revan via email. Hello, Dustin, Lauren, and Wesley. First off, congrats, Dustin and Lauren. Thank you. I just finished listening to your last podcast, Jehovah's Kingdom, and I wanted to fill in some gaps for you. First of all, you did a great job explaining what, quote, we believe. Oh, I guess I should mention that I was a JW for 30 years. Oh, boy. I am a second generation, and I am born in what we in the ex-JW community refer to those of us whose parents were JWs when we were born, and that is the only thing that we knew. I am an atheist now, but for simplicity's sake, I will simply refer to what the JWs believe, and what Watchtower teaches is what we believe. Hmm. We would never use the phrase Jehovah's Kingdom. It is God's kingdom. We believe that while it is ultimately Jehovah's kingdom, he is not the king, but instead has entrusted his son, Jesus, as the kingdom of heaven. There, as the king of the kingdom. Um, Ah. Yes, I never saw Jehovah's kingdom anywhere. But between all of the talk of the JW end of time as being about the kingdom... And it being Jehovah's Witnesses, I combined those two to try to create a clever title. All right. So, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. But I, <laughs> I was I was going for clever. Um, I, I hope it was effective for that. Well, actually, it must have been since we got this very, very nice, nice email. Revan, you were too nice. Go harder next time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He did answer that the lions and giraffes will start living together immediately after Armageddon. Oh, boy. Because the animals at that moment will all become vegetarians. And JWs pride themselves on having a concise message because we are speaking the pure language. The only time we are allowed to change doctrine is if the governing body discovers new light, which is something that we love to learn. That means that the governing body decides that what is current doctrine does not fit anymore. We receive new light and like the Borg, we assimilate the new information. (laughs) Previous beliefs are referred to as old light and it doesn't matter anymore. An example of it, the generation of 1914 that will by no means pass away, but this is old light. The new light is the overlapping generations doctrine. And yeah, Lots, lots more detail here, but the, uh, the new light concept, um, Adventists had a, a very similar concept in the 1800s that they called present truth. And it was that as they discovered new things in the Bible, uh, through their studies that, um, God was revealing new light to them and that was advancing their understanding and knowledge and they were able to improve their doctrine um, with present truth but even the old stuff was still good for the time because it was present truth then it just got replaced by new present truth (laughs) yeah yeah well anyway that is it for this week we have gone long and uh several stories will be patron only Uh, i haven't decided which ones yet but the patrons will know. Actually, no, they bum, won't, because they'll bum. just have the long version. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for this time. Don't forget uh, episode 200 coming up at 2, 3, 4, or 5, depending on your time zone if you're in the continental U.S., on the 20th of May. Oh, boy. And that's it for this week. Remember, not all those who wander are lost.
Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.